preach. And he said, I want to hear you preach. So that's, hey, that's good. Praise God. Amen. I'm always ready. I learned a long time ago, be instant in season, out of season. Yes, uh, I always thought one, one day on a Sunday morning up at Tabernacle Baptist Church that Dr. Seitler uh, would stand up that morning and say, I don't really have any peace about it. And Brother Johnson, did God give you something? So I was ready to preach. He never did that. <laughs> Amen. Didn't think he would. Amen. All right. I, I began last week. I'm dabbling around with the fruit of the Spirit. And when I say dabbling, I want you to understand. I've, I've preached through the fruit of the Spirit. And you'll find that uh, in the New Testament. Uh, there are nine aspects of one fruit. By the way, the fruit of the Spirit is a singular thing. I believe if you don't have all nine aspects, you're not filled. You can be filled to a degree. When you read them, it's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Now, when you break those down, they are in three aspects. Again, you as a creature of God are what's called a trichotomy. You are a three that make up a one. God made you one body, which is world conscious. We've got five senses. Through these five senses, we perceive everything that's around of us. You've got hearing, you've got sight, you've got smell, you've got taste, you've got touch. Then we are soul, and the soul is what is self-conscious. That's where we run into an issue. I like what I like. So you've got three outward, love, joy, and peace or three inward, then you got three outward, and that's long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. That's how we interact with people out here. And then we've got three faith, meekness, temperance. That's the spirit that's upward with God. Now, I began dealing with love last week. I'm going to deal with that probably for a couple of more weeks. Love. I believe when you get saved, God will give you love. I fell in love when I got saved with things that, uh, boy, I used to, I tolerated uh, as a child. And then as a young man, I'd go to church. I couldn't believe those preachers preached that long. It just, it tore me up. I was a watch watcher from the word go. I didn't get saved until I was 28 years of age. Been in church, listen. Oh, oh, I was like one of them. I, I came to church to get out. You know what I'm talking about. Some people, boy, I, you know, we got dinner, we got dinner, we got dinner, we've got all this. I, I found out if you'll leave your supper in the stove, you'll be all right. Amen. You leave your dinner in the stove, we're not going to get out on time. So I began dealing with the word love. I dealt with it last time. It starts simply with this. If you do not love God, you're not going to love anything else that God has. Your love for God will dictate who you are spiritually, Amen. what you do spiritually. Speaking of God's love, listen, over in 1 John chapter 4, I'm going to read some verses. We love Him because He first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. We're talking about love. If we love God, we'll love one another. Amen. We love God, we'll love the house of God. Yes. We love God, we'll love the Word of God. Amen. We'll love sinners. Hmm? Hey, I'm talking about love. What happened when I got saved, I fell in love first with the house of God. I, listen, uh, we, got, we got saved in an independent Baptist church. Barbara and I both. We, we were raised Baptist. Uh, I was a Southern Baptist. She was a General Baptist, which is a free will Baptist. And uh, hey, we thought Baptist was Baptist was Baptist was Baptist. We're just all Baptists, right? Hmm? Got into an independent Baptist church. I've said before, I walked in, my sideburns and bell-bottom breeches and platform shoes, son. Barbara with her short skirt, we had come to worship God on a Sunday. Amen. And you know, they loved us. Praise God. They, just, they, they loved us. I got saved six years later, Barbara did, but, but something happened. When I got saved, I fell in love with the things that God loves. Amen. 
I'm going to deal with love this morning. If you look at our text just for a moment, I want to read verse 31 down through verse number 35, John chapter number 13. Let me get over to 13. I'm in 14. Let me go back here to 13. I want you to look in verse number 31. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said. Now, Judas has received a sock. He's gone out to betray. They're in what we call the Last Supper. They're in an upper room. And when he was gone out, listen, Judas would have never got this anyway. He's going to give them some spiritual truth in these verses. Look at verse 31. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. If God be glorified in Him, God shall also glorify Him in Himself and shall straightway glorify Him. He's talking about He's going to the cross to glorify God, and through His dying on the cross, God glorified Him. Now, little children, aren't you glad that God treats us like His kids? Just like we were His only child. Hey, a personal relationship with a very personal God. This one, hey, Jesus Christ died for you. I always knew he died for the world. One day that thing became very personal to me when I saw myself lost without God on that Sunday night. And friend, when I lifted my hands to heaven, I said, Lord, forgive me and save me for Jesus. Hey, thank God for that. Got got all the way in. But something transpired on the inside. I'm not just talking about outward change. God started that immediately. I went home, told my wife, I got saved, poured the booze out of the refrigerator. God broke my cusser. Hey, two weeks later, he got this and he got that. and He's still working on me today. Hey, he'll always be working on me. But something changed in there that changed my outlook on everything else. Now, notice what he's saying here. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. He's getting ready to go to the cross. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. He's getting ready to go home. He said, where is he going? We can't come. He's going back to the Father. Now, thank God we come later. Amen. Amen. Brother Rodney and Miss Carolyn are forever together with the Lord this morning. Thank God. I'm glad that she left first. Barbara and I have talked about what will Carolyn do when Rodney's gone. Rodney was 79 years old. Carolyn would have been 79 in July. God took them both within three weeks. Thank God. Hey, I'm glad that God did it right. But He told them, I'm going away. And where where I'm going, you can't go. What He's telling them is, I'm going to leave. That's why you get John chapter number 14, let not your heart be troubled. What's He talking about? Chapter number 13 where He told them He's going away. He's going to leave them. All right. Now, notice in the context... Ye shall seek me. As I said unto the Jews, Whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, A new commandment I give unto you. Boy, I thought we had enough of these. I'm going to give you a brand new commandment now. That ye love one another. Now notice the next phrase. As I have loved you. Boy, what a sorry bunch of disciples he had. Old Peter's going to deny him thrice before the cock cock crows once. Boy, how he loved old Peter. When he resurrected, he he told Mary, you go tell Peter. I'll meet him in Galilee. He knew that rascal was going back to fishing. Uh, He wasn't fishing for pleasure. He went back to his old business. He just simply walked away from the ministry because he had failed God and that was crushing down on him. When he went out and wept bitterly, Christ just looked at him. He went out. He was crushed. Aren't you glad God didn't leave him that way? Amen. Now notice what he said in here. That you love one another as I have loved you. Listen, how does God love you this morning? He loves me. He looks beyond my fault and sees my need. I call it out of the Song of Solomon, one of the most beautiful books. I was going to preach a series through there one day, and a man told me, you can't do that in mixed company. 
I said, there's a whole book in the Bible I can't preach. And Mick Scott, are you kidding me? Hey, I, I thought he gave us a completed Amen. word. Yes. And Paul said, I am free of the blood of all men, for I have shunned not to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Hey, there's nothing we can't preach. Amen. And friend, I don't like to be limited I was going to start preaching at a young men's home one time and the man called me and he said, I want you to preach. But he said, I want you to understand. I don't want you telling them that they'll die and go to hell. He said, they've been told that all their life. I said, they've been cursed at all their life. But I told him in his office, if they don't know they'll die without Christ and go to hell, they'll never have a chance of salvation. And I told him that morning, I'll be glad to preach at this home, but you will not limit what I preach. Thank God for men it won't limit. Now, notice what he said. Here's that commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also... Love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you have love one, and there's a little word after one. Do you see that word? Look in verse number 35. The word two. T-O. Oh, preacher, you're going to preach on a word. Oh, let me tell you, that's an important word because it makes a qualifying change with what he's saying. Not that you love one another. That's the commandment. That you have one, you love one another. But chapter, verse 35, he put the word to in there. Now let me explain why that word's important. Words are important in your Bible. That's why we believe in verbal, plenary, inspiration and preser- divine preservation of the Word of God. I believe that every word you have in your Bible is there for a reason. And if you pay attention to the Word, sometimes we just scan read. You know, Bible college taught me to scan read. I mean, if you were, if you were studying the Pentateuch, Pentateuch, hey, that's a whole lot of Scripture, all right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that's five big books of the Bible. And we had to read them about five times that semester. We had to do that for every class. You had to, there was so much reading. Hey, I had to work. I got up early in the morning, took the kids to school, went to work. When I came back from work, I had about 45 minutes to come home, shower, shave, eat, dress, not exactly in that order, and go back to college. Come back in at 9 o'clock at night. Then I had studying to do, homework to do, praying to do, Bible reading to do, listen or not. So what happened was I got used to scan reading. I'm a very fast reader, but my comprehension is not as good. Words are important. Now let me say what he's saying right here. I, I, I heard somebody say one time, don't tell me you love me, show me you love me. Amen. Did you know you can love somebody without giving that love to somebody? We can get in the flesh and, and love things. Hey, he's talking about showing something. You husbands, you tell your wife you love her. You show her you love her. Amen. I'm talking about Sunday all the way through Saturday. I'm talking about 365 and a quarter days a year. I'm Amen. not talking about on Mama's Day or any other kind of day. I'm talking about showing them your love for them. What's missing in our marriages today is the word G-I-V-E, and that's how God defined love. For God so loved that He gave. Amen. That's what he's talking about. So we're going to look at it just for a moment. As I have loved you. He said, you give that same love to them. I'm glad Jesus just didn't say I love you and just walked off and left them. Let them flounder around. Hey, he led them. That's why when he was going away, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. 
I love the word. He said, it is expedient. He used that word that I go away. Expedient means the best thing that could ever happen to these disciples was for Christ to go to heaven and the Spirit of God to come in. Because Christ in a human body was not omnipresent. The Holy Ghost of God is everywhere all the time, son. He can be with every believer all the time. Amen. Now, in the absence of the physical presence of Christ, why the importance? It is love that bonds the church together. Let me read out of Ephesians. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called with all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Listen to verse 3. This is Ephesians 4. Endeavoring. That word endeavoring means that we are to work hard, to labor diligently, continuing work in our endeavors. That's, that's where our heart is. That's where our work is. That's what we're doing. So he used that word endeavoring. Then he said to keep the unity. The word unity speaks of a oneness. I'm going to tell Rodney Proctor's family now what I tell every family when mom and dad's gone. One day your mom and dad's going to be gone. How many lost mom and dad? A whole bunch of us have. Barbara's lost all of hers. Hey, I buried mine. Preached my dad's funeral. Preached my mama's funeral. Thank God for the privilege to do that. But I told my brothers and my sister in that hospital room while mom lay there, she was gone. And I told them, now the glue that has bound us together through these years is gone. And now we're going to have to bind together. In the absence of the physical presence of Jesus Christ, it was their love that they had not just of one another, but to one another that bound them together. What makes our church what it is this morning? I think it's because we love each other. Amen. I love you better than butter pecan ice cream. Have I ever told you that? <laughs> Man, that's saying something. Hey, if you've ever been to Biltmore and, and, and went back on the backside where the animals are and they've got an ice cream shop there and got one of those waffle combs with that butter pecan ice cream, it just it adds a different dimension to the world. It's all good, amen. <laughs> to keep the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. I want to talk about love just for a moment. What is love? Our love one for another is a witnessing love. He said that in here, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. You know, there's so much infighting in churches and between churches and between pastors. and it's, I, I've never seen so many people divided over so many small things. One thing I've learned as I got older, I learned to choose my fight. Some things you walk away from, some things you cannot walk away from. I believe the wisdom and the discernment is the better part of that valor. That we learn when, where, and how to fight, and then when, where, and how not to fight. All right? That's what he's talking about here. What's the bond? We've got a church that loves one another. God, everybody here is different. Amen. Not two of you is alike. You say, we're twins. You're not a bit alike. Harold and Carol Smith are as different as night and day. How many know that? Man, let me tell you, they are personality-wise, everything. They're not able to be here. My deacons. You just pray for them. Amen. Maybe Joan can bring Brother Harold tonight. I, boy, it breaks my heart. I can't pick Brother Carol up anymore. They won't let me have him anymore because of the condition of his mind. He's a fall risk. He's got all this... But I'm talking about a love that binds. One thing that happened here 35 years ago when I got into this pulpit was we all fell in love with each other. God. Love's never diminished. I thank God. It's a witnessing love. By this shall all men know. Listen. 
People will know that you're a child of God when you have the love of God shed abroad in your heart and you love each other. As long as we're still fighting about these things that don't matter. I'm not talking about biblical conviction. That's, that's a horse of a different color. And I'll fight a stinking bear with a switch. Hey, I, I, I don't compromise the Word of God. I'm not going to compromise this Bible that I've got in my hand. I'm not going to compromise what I believe. I believe what I believe. Somebody say, well, you're going to face somebody, they, they really know what they believe. Oh, they don't even know how much I know what I believe. Hmm? I, don't give, hey, I don't give an inch. Amen. If I think I am biblically right, I'm not going to give on the subject. If I'm biblically wrong, then you show me I'm biblically wrong and then we'll go from there. Fine. Hey, I'm not a perfect man. Amen. But friend, if I believe what I'm preaching is right in the Bible, then we stand where we are. It's a witnessing love. Then it's an assuring love. Over in John, 1 John 3, we know that we pass from death into life. Hey, you want to know how you know you're saved? Boy, there's a lot of ways. Number one way... I'm saved because God says I am. Amen. That's not dependent on how I feel. That has nothing to do with how I feel. People say, oh, I feel so saved. Well, praise God. Hey, these last few months, I haven't felt very saved in the mornings. Walking around the house trying, you know, we got two steps up out of our bedroom into the kitchen, into the dining room, and I take one step up and start taking that one backward and I have to grab onto stuff. Hey, I thank God this morning that salvation is not feeling based. Amen. I've had people shout and praise God and then they leave the service of God, the house of God, the life for God. I don't know if they're in or out. I have hey, had a young man at Bible college one time. That guy would shout. Hey, just... That's all he did, just shout, praise God. Boy, that old, old brother Clark was in there, Dr. Clark preaching to us one day, and listen, he was skinning our hide. I sat in that little amen corner over there with the piano over there. I'd sit over there, boy, I, I would just had my head down because he done beat me up, man. He was working on me. And this little old guy, first year student, back there in the back, ah, glory to God, preacher. Tear him up, preacher. Get him, preacher. And I, boy, he didn't last until the water got hot. Witnessing love. I know I'm saved today because God put something in my heart that loves what God loves and it put it for you. Amen. First got saved. They, they used to do a lot of hugging in that church. We don't do a lot of hugging men and women. That, that's, they, 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 just, they hugged anything that moved up there. And they had one of them hugging things. I hadn't been saved long on Sunday night. And a man looked at me and he started, and I thought, don't you even think about it. Where I come from, you've got to be careful with that hugging them. Now I hug them, amen. He come over and grabbed a hold of me. Little old fella about that tall, wrapped them arms around me. And I thought, well, it ain't as bad as I thought. <laughs> hey, man. hey, when I was a kid, pink was a girl and blue was a boy. Just, uh, you know, on mailboxes and stuff. You know, I was raised about as old school as you can be raised. But I thank God for something, a witnessing love. It's a forgiving love. Ephesians 4, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath what? Boy, hey, it's a forgiving thing. I'm hard to live with. She ain't showing no friendliness at all, son. Look at her. She don't smile. She don't frown. She don't nod. She, I got a good wife. Son, I've got passions. Strong-willed. You say, preacher, you're easy going. Now, let me tell you, I'm about as tough as a lighter knot. <laughs> hey, thank God. I've got a forgiving wife. 
after she, hey, we got in a fight not long ago, and I had her down on her knees, had her right where I wanted her, and she was saying, come out from under the bed and fight like a man. <laughs> you know them eyes closed things, they bad. Hey, I hate it when she's always right. But every time she's right, you know what she does? She marks it up. You know why she marks it? Because when she's wrong, she can cancel it out. Hey, you know why we get along? We love each other to a forgiving point. I thank God I married her for who she is, not for what I could make her. And I thank God that God did a work in her life. Boy, when she got saved, she got S-A-V-E-D. Thank the Lord for it. Never doubted her salvation. Have you ever doubted it yet? She, not, she shakes that little head, son. Let me tell you, people doubt their salvation. That woman never has forgotten and doubted what she got. Amen. June the 25th, 1982, 9 o'clock on a Friday night, my wife stepped out into an old sawdust trail and came down to an old-fashioned altar and got S-A-V-E-D, and it has lasted... Hey, God. Thank God for it. The love that we have for each other has got to be a forgiving love. As God hath forgiven us for Christ's sake. Then it's a compassionate love. John chapter 15 verse 12, This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You know what? I'll die for you. I'll take a bullet for you. I told you somebody come through that door with a gun to shoot up my people. He's going to meet somebody in the aisle that he ain't going to like. You say you one of them pistol packing breachers. I is that I is. You know, I saw a sign the other day. Barbara started to get that thing. It said, is that it is. I say it all the time. It is what it is, right? That means I can't change it, you can't change it, we can't do anything about it, we might well just go ahead and accept it. It's a compassionate love that a man lay down his life for his friend as God loved us. He died in our place. He took our shame. He took our sins. It's compassionate. It's a sincere love. I like this. Let love be without dissimulation. You know, a lot of people have told me they loved me before, but they stuck me in the back with a knife that just took my breath away. Boy, you go to 1 Corinthians 13. We're not going to go there. Charity. He's not talking about love. Don't ever substitute love for the word charity. Charity is under the umbrella of love, but charity is brotherly love. He's talking to a church. I love my dog, I love my cat, I love my sheep, I love my deer, I love my turkeys, I love... I, we, we got all these loves going on. This, this is a different ballpark here. Amen. Dissimulation. You like to be with them. You don't talk about them. You don't envy them. You only want the best for them. You do your best to help them. You give them the benefit of the doubt. You hold them up in prayer. You try to encourage them. And you're willing to forgive them. That's the love God's talking about this morning. Amen. Now, I'm through. I want to read one more verse. Galatians 5, 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Aren't you glad this morning you're free? You're not under bondage. Sometimes we try to put people under bondage. They're not under bondage. You're at liberty. Thank God. That's not liberty to sin. That's liberty to serve. He's talking about two different things. Because when you take that in its context, you've not been called under liberty. You've been called under liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You get over to the book of John. The Lord laid aside His outer garment and girded Himself with a towel and took the lowest place of a servant and began to wash the disciples' feet. 
Can you imagine Almighty God washing your dirty feet? They wore sandals in those days and their feet got hot and dusty and filthy and dirty. You remember how it was when you used to run barefoot? What well, Kids used to go barefoot. Now they can't do it anymore because they'll get a germ. <laughs> Don't want to get no germs. You know, them germs will hurt you. Them germs will kill you. That's why these children get sick all the time because they have no immune system. That is a natural immunity through bacteria. They used to tell us, you let your kid eat a pound of dirt a day. Be careful where they get the dirt. Okay. <laughs> you, check the, you check the dirt out first, all right? They, they may be in the dog pen someplace. So see, you just make sure you check it out first, all right? This thing I love this morning, it's a serving love. He washed their feet. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you love God's people? I love them. There's there's a whole lot of them. Listen, bless their heart. Sometimes you've got to love some of them at a distance, and I hate that. You've been in the ministry long enough to know that. Some of them you just got to love. But you know what? Here lately I have seen a reconciliation take place between some that let a small difference come in between them years ago. And you know what? And, and, and let me just say something, people, about love. Don't ever stand at a grave site one day and say, I wish I had done something different than what I did. I watched as that gap closed that had been there for a lot of years. Let me tell you something. The love of God's an amazing thing. He loves us beyond our fault, our failures, our shortcomings. Hey, our willful disobedience to the Word of God. He loves you anyway. Isn't that a blessing? When I'm bad, He loves me. When I'm good, He loves me. When I'm mediocre, He loves me. When I'm complacent, He loves me. That love has never diminished. Now, I know it's kind of hard on us human folks. Amen. But I thank God this morning that He placed within my heart a love for the people of God. Let's stand this moment. We're going to have an invitation. If you need to come, you come. If you need to come this morning, you come. Thank God this morning He placed love.